What is good, all of our listeners? Welcome to another episode of Games and Groceries. I'm Adam. And I'm Liz. And today's episode, we're going to be talking about Captain Spirit and why lore and canon matters in video games. So, Liz, how are you doing? Good. Good? You just finished Captain Spirit. I did, about two minutes ago. About two minutes ago, because you were at work, today was my day off. So we played Captain Sp- Spirit. Look, we played Captain Spirit separately. Yes. Right. So I played it as soon as it dropped at noon, and I was just texting you at work. Yeah. And you were probably at work, just saying, "Shut up! I'm trying to work." <laughs> I'm trying to work. <laughs> because there's so much uh, to talk about about this game, uh, but we're gonna be talking about that uh, as well as why Lord Mass. And I just wanted to. Drop a little hints about uh, the gaming news that happened this week. Uh, for one thing, and I, I'm just going to briefly talk about this. Yeah. Um, GameStop is looking for a buyer. They're, they're looking for a buyout right now. And I saw this coming from two perspectives. One, as a customer of GameStop. And two, as a former employee of GameStop. I've worked there for two years. I kind of saw this coming. But I didn't want to like, like drop the news or anything. But I'm 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 glad I left. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I left. Um, but I do have some former coworkers that like they're still like my brothers, and I and I hate that that this is happening. Like it, yeah, if it does happen to them. Yeah, because I mean, there's a small chance they could still keep their jobs if they get bought. But usually, if companies sell or like someone buys the company out they're gonna want to revamp everything especially with how poorly GameStop does Mm -hmm. in everything they do they would probably just want to wipe the slate clean train their own managers and not have managers and employees who are stuck in the ways of the old GameStop or yeah whatever like they might even change the name and just I, I they'll probably end up firing everybody and that's the thing I wish they would just Look for a buyout and still almost be like the same company because what we saw from GameStop, it's more of like a like a, um, a, uh, a games kind of collectors. You know, like they have statues and T-shirts and watches. Um, I don't know when the last time you've been in GameStop was. But, oh, wow, because I avoid them at all costs. Yeah. Um, but they bought out Think Geek, which is more of like a memorabilia of video games mm-hmm. uh, kind of company. And I hope they start to turn around and say, hey, look, the digital market for video games is growing. Uh, physical games are kind of dying out a little bit. Uh, so they should revamp themselves, right? Like re-identify as like a gaming clothing store, almost. Or just, I mean, to shed some light on our favorite store in Lancaster County. Mm-hmm. I wish they would be more like Just Press Play, oh, yeah. which is not only games, it's also video, it's also uh, movies oh, and yeah. retro games and board games, and it's just got something for everyone there, and I don't know, it's just the feeling of the stores different ways. In GameStop, I go in and one, they're all small, cramped stores, mm-hmm. which it doesn't I don't, flow well. It doesn't. None of them flow well, and I, I, that's why I honestly have always hated going into games out, just because I hate the setup, and it always seems crowded, and I don't deal well with crowded places. Um, that, and I feel like I'm being watched because the store is so open. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't go in GameStop. But yeah, I wish they would just revamp it in that way, and like, their marketing. Like, I don't know. It's just that the store just like throws me off like i don't know like, yeah. i feel like i have no right to be in there because i'm not like a serious gamer yeah it's like that it's like that one comic store i went into and i asked them questions about comic books because i was i was new mm-hmm. in the comic book series and i and i feel like this is how you feel yeah um and i was just asking them like hey how do i know which comic is in like the same series and they kind of rolled their eyes and said like well just figure it yeah. out um and there are some game stops mm-hmm. where it was like that um, and there were a couple employees at my particular GameStop that did that, but for the majority, they were pretty nice. Mm-hmm. But I have walked into some GameStops where if you're not like a hardcore gamer, like yeah. you don't have every system that's ever been made. Yeah. You know. And like, I don't know, like, 
I mean, I never, I, I personally have not bought anything from GameStop since I played the GameCube. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because, I mean, that's all I played when I was younger. I haven't had a need to, because you buy all my stuff. Yeah. Um, But, I don't know, I just never felt like there were games in there for me. Not for you. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know. And that's the thing, like... The store just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. It's like GameStop's more looking for sales, whereas Just Press Play... By the way, if you're ever in Lancaster County, look up Just Press Play, some of the best video gaming stores out There's there. one in Mannheim and one on Lincoln Highway. Mm-hmm. There's a... I think there's two more. They, they just opened oh, up another okay, one. okay, yeah. I was going to say, I only know the two. Yeah. But yeah, Just Press Play is awesome. It's awesome. Um, we specifically love the one on Oregon Pike. Yeah. On Oregon Pike. Because they're awesome. They are. But, uh, but yeah, particularly GameStop, they're just looking for sales. Yeah. And and, and this is coming from a former employee. Yeah. Uh, all so the, he knows. <laughs> yeah, so I know. They're just looking to build up each number, uh, how much money you can make per transaction. Uh, and that's the other thing. They're not working on commission. Mm-mm. They're just working so you don't get yelled at. Yeah. Um, so it comes off of like... It's like, oh, ma'am, what game do you want to buy? Uh, what game do you want to buy? And you know, you're you're just as a customer. It's like, well, you know, I'm I'm kind of looking for, I don't know. And you would probably go in there and just say, I I don't know. What what should I? Play? I probably wouldn't have asked them. I'd just look around, confused, and no one would greet me, and I'd leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, whereas just press play, they start to they start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, whereas in GameStop, they more or less, I would say most, not all, but yeah. most GameStops, they're just looking for not a discussion, yeah. but a sale. You're not encouraged to make a relationship with the customer as much as a sale with the customer. Whereas yeah. in Just Just Play, like, we were regulars there. They knew our life. They knew we were moving. Mm-hmm. They knew where we were moving. Like, they knew us. And we came back, like, months, six months later, and they're like... Oh, you guys used to come in here. Like, they recognize us. And that was, like, the thing. Like, they knew us and they remembered us. Yeah. It's because we're famous, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super famous. Super famous. Um, but, you know, just to summarize that, I'm not generally surprised that they're looking for a buyout. No. I'm not. Uh, it sucks that it happens. Because, mm-hmm. you know, these are still human beings. They still need employment. So you never want to hear anybody lose their job, yeah. especially when it's due to a buyout and not because, you know, they stole from the company. Yeah. Which I, I knew a guy who stole from the company in GameStop and he got fired for it. I was like, good riddance. Yeah, right. um, but when you hear of somebody, like my cousin, uh, mm-hmm. she she almost lost a job because of a of a buyout. Well, no, no, they were just closing. It wasn't a buyout. Oh, yeah. It, it was just closing closing uh, yeah. certain branches. Um but that's that piece of news. Uh, GameStop looking for a buyout. I'm not shocked, especially when they had a CEO who lasted three months. He said, <laughs> like, hey, I'm out, dog. He probably looked at the sales numbers and of the he's finances. Like, nope. Nope. That's the biggest nope ever. Because he said personal reasons, quote unquote, personal oh, yeah. reasons. And personal. I was like, I was like, hmm, what kind of personal reasons, man? Um, but yeah, so GameStop's closing. Another part is uh, something I'll touch on a little bit here because we're talking about Captain Spirit. But Life is Strange 2 was announced. Woo! It was such a surprise. Uh, not just a surprise, like because we all saw it coming, but the release date was a surprise. Yeah, that was soon. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at it, and I was like, I, w- I was looking September 27th, and I was looking in my head, I was like, 2019. And I was looking at the date like three times. I was like, nope, that's, that's an eight. <laughs> that's 2000, 2018. Well, yeah, but it was an 8, not a 9. Oh, okay. You said 2008. No, I said that's an 8. Oh, that's an 8. I thought I said 2008. <laughs> like, if we're going That'd back That would be awesome. Time, we're going back in time. 10 years. You're coming with us. Um, but, yeah, it was a super big, super happy surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the thing I was thinking about. Um, uh, I think you and one other person just said, like, well, why didn't they give it time in E3? Like, they gave Captain Spirit. But yeah. here's my thing. If... If they announced Life is Strange 2 at E3 along with Captain Spirit, do you think anybody would have even blinked an eye at Captain Spirit? Well, they could have released Captain... They could have talked about Captain Spirit first 
Mm-hmm. And then we get all hyped for that. And then they said, and following Captain Spirit comes mm-hmm. September, yeah. we're going to have Life Strange 2. Like, I just never understand companies that... Is that the third plane that's going over us? Probably. We live, like, right next to an airport. <sighs> that's his only auto. But anyways. Um, but... Now I lost my train. Yeah, if they if they um, if yeah, they said, so if they said it after and they said now Life is Strange Two, like, like following Captain Spirit coming out in June in September, we'll have Life is Strange Two. Like I just never understood companies that do their whole spiel at E three and then like a week or two after E three they make this huge announcement. Like, what were you doing two weeks? Like your yeah. your presentation was the most boring presentation. If you had brought this crap out what? two weeks ago, we would have been interested. Like you know, like uh, not. I'm not saying like. Deck brought not- this crap out. <laughs> what is this little eight year old boy? No, I mean no. I'm not boy. talking about this this company specifically. But like I've seen like I remember last year there was something like that. You were, like you were excited. You were waiting for something and they didn't meant like, like. E3, like, you're watching E3, and then I remember something, like, was announced, like, a couple weeks after E3 last year, and you were so excited. I'm like, why didn't they bring that up at E3? Like, I mm-hmm. just don't understand, like, it, yeah, especially I when they have, I don't remember. Yeah. But especially when they have, like, a bland presentation, and then, mm-hmm. like, two weeks later, they announce something, like, did you not know <laughs> two yeah. weeks ago that you were going to do this? Yeah, I, I was a little, like, not skeptical. But I was confused when they first announced it. They it said um, Life is Strange two coming out, uh, and there's a lot of speculation of what's going to be, um, and including um, one YouTuber. He's a small YouTuber. Go check him out, uh, William Hella, uh, YouTuber, uh, and he analyzed the trailer pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, read may- way more than I did. Yeah, and uh, the one thing he pointed out was that each Life is Strange uh, logo. When you see the word is, so life is, mm-hmm. strangely, that is, uh, in the first one, it's in a Polaroid camera. Yeah. And, or a Polaroid photo. Yeah. And then the second Life is, Strange, uh, life is Strange Before the Storm, there's an anarchy symbol symbolizing um, Chloe's love of anarchy. Yeah. And now we see the is, which is in, on, or on. On a patch. On a patch, on a backpack. And he pointed out that sometimes when travelers go out, they collect patches to put on the backpack, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's to symbolize where they've been. And I actually just looked this up. I, I haven't pre-ordered Life is Strange 2. You can. I'm waiting for a deluxe edition to come out. Um, I might tweet them. But where's the deluxe edition? Okay. Um, but if you pre-order it, you actually get uh, two patch sets. Uh, one of one of them being uh, symbol, symbols from the first Life is Strange. Like you have the blue butterfly... Um, you have a couple other things. I, I wish I remember, but I remember the blue butterfly. And then the second one, you see patches like Power Bear, which we just saw in Captain Spirit. So you get two patch. Like, so patches are pretty important yeah. in this game that they're collectibles. So I think, um, and again, YouTuber William Hella, uh, really yeah, great content. Definitely go watch that. Yeah. Just deconstruction of that simple little. Simple trailer. and quick. Yeah, simple, quick trailer, and he pulled a lot out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was really interesting. So Life is Strange 2 officially announced. First episode coming out September 27th. Uh, don't not, where's the deluxe edition? <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll tweet them a little later. Uh, and then finally on, on the news front, there was a lot that happened, but yeah. I just wanted to give my top three. This is something we're going to talk about next week, since it just pretty much almost became official. Um, the World Health Organization uh, just released uh, their final draft on game addiction, and now it's actually a mental disorder. Now, that's not the problem. When you think of game addiction, and we'll talk about this more next week. Mm-hmm. When you think of game addiction, you think of a really unhealthy habit, right? You, you think of, like, you know, days and days. I knew, I knew a guy in college. He played... Uh, I think it was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, I think it was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. He played that for a week straight, and he 100% of the game in a week. He didn't go to any classes. He didn't go to any meals. He just sat in the dorm and just played. And starved to death? I don't know what he ate. He probably had Pop-Tarts or something. <laughs> um, just stocked up on Pop-Tarts and soda before he sat down. Yeah. <laughs> That's disgusting. 
interesting. It was so, and he later dropped out of college. Of course. He clearly wasn't yeah. cut out for it. Well, I mean, <laughs> there was more to the, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But when you talk about game addiction, I think closer to that. Now, yeah, definitely. When I see that, I didn't even think game addiction. I just thought, you know, oh, he just hates going to class like mm-hmm. everybody else. Game addiction, I think, is more serious. So I'll end it on this point. According to the World Health Organization, to classify yourself as a mental disorder and game addiction, you have to play 20 hours or more per week of video games to classify as a game addict. That's roughly 2.86 hours, which is 2 hours and 50 minutes roughly per day in a 7-day week. Per day. That's, that's, that's nothing. And, and, and I'm sure I just did that. Yeah. <laughs> I just played three and a half hours of Captain Spirit. Yeah. On my off day. Like three and a half hours. And, and that's the thing. So, so that's the other thing. If, you come, if I come home from work and I play video games instead of watching sports for two hours and 50 minutes, which is roughly a sports game. Two hours yeah. and fifty minutes. Yeah. Um. That's just about one sports game. That's one Eagles game. I am looking so forward to preseason. Let's go. I just, I just pumped myself up. Anyways. Baseball. Baseball. Um. Huh, baseball. That's four hours. Um. But if I come home from work, and I watch a baseball game or a football game, right? Uh, I'm not classified as a TV or a sports addict. But if I sit down and I come home to an interactive video game that stimulates my brain for two hours and 50 minutes after I come home from work, I am now a game addict. Yeah. I am well, not we'll talk more about that we'll next talk about because we're 16 minutes in. We haven't even <laughs> talked about our subject. I know. I'm just... <laughs> <sighs> I know. There's so, there's so much to say about the whole addiction thing, which is why it's going to be a really good episode next week. I know. It's, but... Ugh, my entire life. Save it. Ugh. Anyways... So now that we're done with the news, uh, what are we, uh, 17 and 6 minutes in? Uh, I'll, I'll probably put timestamps. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll probably put the timestamps in so that you can navigate each one. Um, maybe not because I forgot to write it down. Um, but I just want to remind everybody that... You can find it, don't worry. Yeah, you can find it. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that you can find this podcast. very first uh, place you can find this podcast is uh, on anchor.fm. Uh, you can find us there. Just look up Games and Groceries. You can also find us on YouTube. I will be uploading this podcast on YouTube. Uh, so you can watch from there or download it from there. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Stitcher, Radio Public, and one other that I forgot to write down. I feel embarrassed. But those are the main ones. The main ones you can find us on are Anchor, YouTube, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. So those are the main ones. Uh, you can find us on various others, and you can even see where we are, where you can find us on anchor.fm. So uh, give us a listen, uh, share it with your friends, uh, and we would love to interact with you. So now that we got the news out of the way, uh, the very first thing I want to talk about before we talk about uh, why Lauren and, blah, blah, lore and canon matter in video games is what we thought about of Captain Spirit. Uh, Liz, why don't you go first? So why don't you tell us your thoughts? Um, well, I played a rushed game because, as Adam said, I was at work until 5 o'clock. So I came home, quick, got into some more comfortable clothes, and we ate dinner and sat down to play the game. Um, it wasn't bad. I mean, I did take my time to look at every anything I could click on. I clicked on anything I could read. I read. And it was all right. I felt a little incomplete because like you because you get the base of story you get where they are in their life you get why they are where they are but I just feel incomplete like I don't know I don't know how to explain it like it just felt like it just felt like a kid playing games like that's all it felt like like Mm. it didn't feel as deep as life is strange and since it's in the same universe I guess I expected it to be a little more like Life is Strange, mm-hmm. you, whereas you, you didn't... You have the expectation, expectations pretty high. Yeah, because Life is Strange, you, go, you have a lot of obstacles, and you have bigger puzzles. And I understand it's a kid, but it's not eight-year-olds playing this game. 
Mm -hmm. Their market isn't to eight-year-olds. It's to the people who played Life Strange, which is, you know, our age, teenagers and older. Um, So I guess that's why I feel incomplete. Like, it just didn't feel like a full game to me. Because it's not a full game. Well, yeah, it does say to be... It's a demo. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, I just feel like there wasn't enough. Because it's a demo. I didn't realize it was a demo. Yeah. Well, like, that's what... And and here's the other thing. I didn't know this, but my friend uh, played on PlayStation. I played on Xbox. Um, I think PlayStation did it right because apparently... Now, I didn't see this personally, but he said that he had, a tr- he had trouble finding Captain Spirit in the first place because it was actually labeled Life is Strange Episode... Or, Dag. Life is Strange 2, Episode 1 demo and actually label it as a demo okay yeah because i was gonna say xbox never said anything about it being a demo and, and they didn't really market it as a demo no, they, they didn't... marketed it as a game i think if they market it more towards as a prequel mm-hmm. more than they then they actually market it as like oh this is captain spirit you know he's kind of like tied into like yeah, strange that's the way they, they they put it in they said oh it's in the same universe but it made it sound like a completely separate story completely separate game yeah not as a demo or a prequel to life strange 2 yeah uh so i'm gonna give my thoughts on it um very much because i highly enjoyed this game um and now i'm gonna go pretty deep into this game so anybody listening that hasn't played Captain Spirit, uh, heavy spoilers, because I want to discuss this game pretty deeply. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you haven't played it, uh, I pretty much did absolutely everything that there is to do in the game, uh, and I played it for about three and a half hours. So if you haven't played it, uh, go ahead and play it. It's a short game. You can get everything within three hours. So, spoiler alert. Uh, spoiler uh, alert. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> uh, and then from now on, going forward, spoiler alert. All right. Very first thing I wanted to talk about, and I told you you about this. Mm-hmm. Um, I told you. Now I'm going to get uh, something personal here with our listeners. Uh, I shared with my wife uh, about my childhood, and I shared with her about my father, and. Uh, very first thing I'm going to say is that I don't know how they keep doing this, but the directors of Life is Strange, they, they for some reason, know exactly what goes on in these situations. It's so scary how accurate mm-hmm. they get it because uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say this in a way of like, oh, boo-hoo, Adam had a rough life. I'm saying this in a way of like, wow, they got this so accurate. Yeah. The way they portray, um, or the way movies portray alcoholic fathers is like this monster menacing over them, beating them relentlessly. And there are alcoholic fathers that, oh, yeah. that do that. Yeah. But they say it like every single one. Yeah. And I'm coming from a childhood where, I'll say this, the guy in the game, um, his name is losing me. Uh, Chris is the boy. Eric. Eric? Oh, yeah. okay. Eric. No, Erickson is oh. their last name. <laughs> Charles. Charles. Charles you're right. Erickson. Charles. Um, Charles Erickson, the father. Um, dead on, like mm-hmm. my father, like dead on. It was so scary playing this game because it was exactly the way my father would have acted. And let me explain that uh, to any of our listeners doing this. Uh, if you played Life is, or, <laughs> if you played Captain Spirit, Life is Strange, Captain Spirit. Um, if you played Captain Spirit, Charles, uh, is an alcoholic. He does smoke, but he still loves his boy. It's that the demon is the alcohol. He's an angry drunk. And mm-hmm. that's the thing. And Liz didn't do this. And I was getting so anxious. Um, when you have a decision to make, the very first decision you make is your father calls you out and he says, uh, boy, uh, he says, um, oh no, now I'm losing the boy's name. Chris. Chris. You literally just said it. Uh, I should have written, written notes. Wroten. Wroten. Written. Wroten it down. Um, but when, when he calls out Chris, Chris, breakfast, I come out right away because I'm a good little boy. Um, <laughs> but when you come out, uh, Charles, he plays with his son, you know, uh, he says, pour yourself some milk. And, uh, Chris just 
pretends that the like he has the force and trying to put the trying to put the milk uh in his glass and uh and uh his his dad comes out and he, he like plays with his son he lifts up the milk and he just pours it for his son and he says like oh you know uh, milk mission accomplished but he's having fun with his son mm-hmm. like and you don't really see the demon yet you just see a good time having with this boy you on the other hand Liz, <laughs> you are like he's like Chris, come out here, and you're just like in a minute, and you were just interacting, and I was just like looking over, like maybe, maybe you should have faced your dad. You should. Well, like I said, the reason I didn't go out right away is because in life is strange. Sometimes when you leave a room, you can't get back in because you're on another yeah. mission. I didn't know to text, so I wanted to explore everything in his bedroom first. Actually, when the dad called my name and suddenly there was something to say back, I was thrown off. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So like, I I was going by a life is strange where i didn't think i was going to be able to get back into the bedroom to explore i wanted to make sure i saw everything first so. yeah so i got in trouble <laughs> uh, but you see the lighter version of the dad and that's what i saw with my dad before he started drinking mm-hmm. um because my dad he was abusive like charles was but he was also playful like charles charles was mm-hmm. um and chris reminded me a lot of myself and again, I'm going to remind everybody, I'm not saying this in a boo-hoo manner. I'm saying this that the directors made this so scarily accurate that he didn't, they didn't make Charles into a monster, mm-hmm. but he made him into this man who constantly drinks to forget. Yeah. Uh, he just, was extremely relatable. Yeah. Um, and I just saw my father... And Charles and I saw myself in Chris, mm-hmm. and it was just so incredible how accurate they got it without making it into like this stereotype, like oh the, and, and that's the other thing they also touched on to, and this is exactly what my dad would have done. Um, they touched on to how his arm was bruised, mm-hmm. and his dad's like, hey, I'm, I didn't mean to do that. I remember we were we were outside, me and my dad, and he was he you know he he had a few. Uh, and we were outside and he said, Oh, I'm so glad it's springtime. And he smacked me so hard on the back of the head that I actually fell forward and I like slammed into the concrete. Yeah. But that's the thing. Uh, the next day he's like, I'm so sad that I did that, you know, but he went right back to drinking, you know, mm-hmm. he had his good sides and his mm-hmm. bad side. You could tell he loved his son. Yeah. But the alcohol was his demon. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. Like, they got this so accurate, like, this situation that goes down. Mm -hmm. So I want to say if the the directors of Don't Nod, um, I'll tweet them. Maybe they'll listen to this. But I just want to say, like, bravo to the whole Life is Strange team, to the Captain Spirit team. You got that situation pretty dead on. Yeah. I was like, wow, you didn't make this into another movie trope. Yeah. You know? So that's the first thing I want to say about Captain Spirit. Um, that I incredibly appreciate it and on a personal level that they didn't just go on the movie route, but they went yeah. on the real route. Yeah. And it made me really think about Life is Strange season one. Mm-hmm. And that's why I didn't really relate to any of the other Life is Strange situations because I didn't have that life. And I wonder yeah. if anybody playing the first Life is Strange, excuse me, uh, the first Life is Strange, uh, like with Kate's situation or even with Chloe's situation uh, with, with having a step parent. I never had a step parent. Um, mm-hmm. I, I wonder if they saw this and I'm like, whoa, that's dead on. And I just wonder now, like the way I felt about Captain Spirit, I'm like, wow, yeah, that's pretty dead on. You related a lot to Max. I related a lot to both Max and Chloe. Like, mm-hmm. Chloe's my more rebel side. Like, she's my inner thoughts. <laughs> and Max is my outer thoughts. Max yeah. is the person I keep, I, I allow to, to be outside. And, I mean, deep down, like, my... Mm-hmm. Is more my personality. But Chloe's definitely my... The side of me that I, like, that I purposefully keep quiet. Yeah. Chloe's who I would love to be. <laughs> but no, I can't. <laughs> But, like, with Max's situation, though, I think you related a lot to her because, like, she was very uh, shy and timid. She didn't really want to talk out loud 
yeah, she didn't want to cause a fuss. She she just wanted to make everyone feel good about themselves, which I try to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I definitely have related to Max. They got that personality pretty correct. I just like when you hear Max curse in mm-hmm. the game, like it sounds so unfamiliar. And I know the first couple times Ready I for cursed, a mosh pit shaka bra. Does Max say that? Yeah, uh, when she put on Rachel's clothes in season one. Oh yeah. Like wow, you like and Chloe's like, oh yeah, you're ready for the for a new concert. I forget what Chloe says, but like Max says, like I'm ready for the mosh pit, shaka bra. Well, not even that, but like the first like when you hear her curse when she yeah. said, "I got a vaccine for the flu and I got the flu," f you, yeah. and like I, they, it just sounds even in the very beginning of the game, you can tell that that doesn't sound natural to her, mm-hmm. and that I relate to that because I just think of the first times I cursed, it was so forced. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just like I'm gonna curse, and like I, I relate to that because I don't think when I when I was younger it was very unfamiliar to pe- for people to hear me curse or do anything bad for that matter yeah. so yes I, I did relate to max on a high level and that's what i mean it's just like the very the very first remarks i want to give this game is how accurate they got the situation mm-hmm. and it just really makes you want to think like how else because i i saw the other games and i really felt for the characters but i wonder if anybody yeah. playing who had that exact situation happen to them i'm like wow i wonder how much like i wonder if anybody played before the storm who had a life like rachel's where it was kind of like a a rich family but they were kind of phony and there were some dark secrets and suddenly a whirlwind yeah i wonder if anybody was like wow that's dead on yeah um and of course it's a different team but yeah so that oh i was gonna just say that like it that is kind of like switch for us because like i'm super into the story and i make very careful decisions in life is strange Mm -hmm. whereas in captain spirit i was like it's okay. Like, I didn't connect with it like you did, whereas yeah. I connect with Life is Strange. Like, you get so annoyed with my decisions in Life is Strange. I'm just like, but you don't understand. These girls are best friends. And, like, that's yeah. how me and my best friend are. And I'm just like, you don't get it, clearly. <laughs> yeah, because with uh, the la- – again, uh, another spoiler for Season 1. So, yeah. spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Season 1, you haven't played it yet. Life is Strange, spoiler ahead. The final decision, I was, like, straight up. Yeah, I'm saving the town. Like, no question. Yeah, he's like, well, of course I'm going to save the town. And I'm just like, no! Yeah. I'm like, I have to save my best friend. Like, why wouldn't you save your best And I'm mad at anyone who doesn't save her because I'm just like, she's your best Don't you understand this relationship? Yeah. Uh, and I didn't relate to that. But, and that's the opposite with Captain Spirit. Whereas I saw this and I was a little bit, like, taken aback because mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. This was my childhood. Not to like a T, because my, my mom's still alive. Well, yeah. For one thing. Um, and I only saw my dad on the weekends, sometimes like longer weekends, mm-hmm. and I went back to my mom. But like whenever I was with my dad, it was dead mm-hmm. on. Um, like he would watch sports games and get drunk until he fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and including, I was, I, I went right back to childhood, like just in an instant, in the very last scene of Captain Spirit, where you wake up your dad, and -hmm. just his movements, and just the way he talks to to Chris, that's exactly how that kind of father would have reacted. You know, why did you wake me up? And he stumbles over. I remember when my dad fell over because he was too drunk. Um, And I was like, Dad, Dad, are you okay? And he's like, well, you know, I'm fine. Why? And they did that. Mm -hmm. Like, they did everything. And I'm like, wow. So... The highest remark I want to give this game, Captain Spirit, is how dead on yeah. they got the situation. They either did really good research or someone on their team has actually lived through it. Yeah. They didn't just, like, do it just because, like, oh, you know, it would be it really make sad. A story. You know it would be really sad, brah? <laughs> Shocker, brah. I don't think the French say any of that. Shocker, brah. Wait, I, French accents. Shockly, brah. I mean, they wouldn't say it at all. I, I hope the directors didn't hear me do that. <laughs> oh, they will never listen to us again because no. of that. Um, the highest remarks, how they got the situation down. But that's the heaviest remarks I can give it. Uh, the other remarks is just like the exploration. Um, and the fact that you have to be in a certain area at a certain time for an mm-hmm. event to happen. 
Like, Liz, you didn't get the phone call. No, I spent most of my time outside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was out. I was, like I said, I was rushing it. So I wanted to get done all the tasks so I could end the game. So, so that, that we, we can talk, record. So we, so we can record and talk about it. I'll go back and play more and, like, actually, like, do more. But, like, I wanted to get all the tasks done and most of the tasks are outside. So. Yeah. And, um, you know, just to defend Liz, like, I had the day off today. So I had all day to play it. And, you know, she just wanted to get this recorded. Yeah. So, but, yeah, so you didn't get the phone call, which was probably the funniest thing. Um, and if you didn't know, uh, we're both Christian. I'm in ministry. And when the phone call came in, I was like, hi, I'm from so-and-so church. And I want to tell you about our Lord and, Se- uh, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I was right. like, which churches don't do that. I have been in a church where they do do that. And I was like, that's a Please bad idea. Please don't I- do that. <laughs> and I was just like, that's a bad idea. And they're like, why? I'm not going to name the church here. Liz, you know which church. Um, but, uh, and, and I was like, that's a bad idea. And they're like, why? And I'm like, and I'm thinking, just like Chris's situation, I've lived through this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, because of exactly what happened in that game. Yeah. Where the dad's too drunk to answer. And the kid's just like, just trying to get off the phone just to like stop his, um, from anybody from calling. Um, but yeah, I'm like, that's a bad idea, but I have seen churches do that. And that's also accurate. Um, but you didn't get that phone call. So you're going to have to play through that again. Yeah. And just Um, sit and stare at the phone. You just sit and stare. Um, but yeah, so there's certain events that happen at a certain time and you need to be in a certain place or else you're not going to see that event until you play it again. There might, they might've been events outside that I didn't see yet. Uh, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to give that remark that you need to be at a certain place at a certain time. Um, the other factor is the graphics look much better than before the storm. Yeah. Um, you said that the graphics look better. Well, like it's the graphics were better Mm -hmm. in a different, they were done a little differently. They were done with a more of a paint idea as it where like, I don't know how to like, it wasn't very detailed. Like, they didn't detail, like, the soda bottles. Like, you didn't mm-hmm. see, like, the name of the soda. You just saw it was orange and there was some white smudge. Or mm-hmm. white smudge, I mean. Um, the animation, on the other hand, was laggy. You thought it was laggy? Yeah. There like, were some parts where it was like a bit when, laggy. When, or, like, not fully looked. Um, I don't know what it was. Of course. Um, yeah. But... Like, when he falls off of his treehouse and he lands on the ground face down, there is, like, a layer of snow. Snow that's that transparent. That you can see through it. And I'm just like, someone didn't finish their job. Someone went to bed instead of finishing the animation there. Yeah. No, you mean, like, um, um, yeah. I forget what you call it. <laughs> yeah. Um, our little protector. Our little protector. I don't know who owns a motorcycle in our street. I don't know. Anyways. It's probably over there. Probably over there. But, yeah, so there are some graphical glitches, but I will say, uh, in a game like this, you want to use Unreal Engine versus Unity. Uh, And when I saw that, now, I'm not an expert on game development. I have studied it a bit, Um, but I can say in a game like a 3D model place, you want to use Unreal Engine. I was actually surprised that they used Unity for Before the Storm. Because Unity are games like, um, I believe Ori and the Blind Forest is done in Unity. I'm not positive. I know I am positive about Cuphead and Oxenfree. Um, uh, Also, Inside was made in Unity. Uh, 2D side-scrollers are are made in Unity. Mobile games are made in Unity. Things with more detail. Uh, Well, not just detail. Actually, less detail. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, Less detail in terms of um, 3D models. So, it's, in my opinion, uh, the Unity engine is a little less than Unreal. Unreal engine is games like uh, Gears of War. Um, the very first Life is Strange is made in the Unreal yeah. engine. Um, things, and this is actually an upgraded Unreal engine. So, I, in my opinion, when I saw Captain Spirit, I saw a lot more detail than Before the Storm and Season 1. Because this is actually upgraded version mm-hmm. um so the graphics i have to give high remarks on um 
if I have to give a negative, because Liz already said her negatives, you know, she wasn't really into it. Um, I don't know. And I don't want to be like, oh, this is the greatest Well, I think game. you played the first, the first time you played it was so emotional. You didn't really have time to, like, think about anything else. I think you might have more negatives. Now that you can go in, you know what to expect, and mm-hmm. you can focus more on the gameplay rather than the story. I would, I would like to say that the, the button la- latency on this game is, like, it plays like butter. Like, uh, clicking the buttons, it, it, it felt natural. There were some lags on some point, but especially on the main menu, it just, like, flew by mm-hmm. the latency. I, I really liked it. They, they improved the latency on the button, on the button reaction. Um, I, I don't know what I would give any, because I came into it with low expectations. Mm-hmm. Because I knew this was just a demo. I knew this was just um, more of a lore-based. This is just a setup. Season two. I did not know that until now. Yeah. Well, this is just a setup. Season two. So, uh, I don't have any negatives offhand other than there were some uh, graphical glitches here yeah. and there. There were some performance issues on the Xbox. Uh, but I heard there was performance issues on all platforms. So, yeah. uh, it's not just the Xbox. But I, that's the only negative I would have is performance issues. Um and I can't really even say, like, if I were to say that, um, you know, I wanted more, mm-hmm. then I would be lying because I knew this was a demo. Yeah. So that's all I really have to say on Captain Spirit. If you're listening to this and you still haven't played Captain Spirit or Life is Strange or Before the Storm, what's wrong with you? Yeah. So. I mean, it's okay if you didn't play Captain Spirit. That just came out today. Yeah. But, I mean, Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm, like, you really need to get on that yeah and i've seen it on sale for five bucks the entire season no excuses no excuses it was on sale for four bucks not too long ago like honestly we say this to all of our gamer friends it's not just listeners not just random people we say it to everyone everybody (laughs) anyone we know that plays games and hasn't played this is shamed and like banned from our house until they play it excuse me sir have you played life is strange (laughs) no what's wrong with you yeah that's a real monster that's a real mental disorder that World Health Organization has to go on a life, lack of life is strange. Right. Mental disorder. <laughs> um, so the very the very last thing we're going to close out on, and I think this is the perfect game to go off, is why does lore actually matter? And I know we're at the 42-minute mark. So I want to touch on the story, and this is kind of like a short topic anyway. Mm-hmm. This is a perfect game to talk about why lore matters, because if I were to say why does lore and canon matter in a video game, it's because the simple phrase, context matters. Mm-hmm. And that's why this game will be so powerful in the context of Life is Strange 2. Because once you play this, before Life is Strange Season 2, the context of this game is going to make that game just that much more powerful. Mm-hmm. You know? Um so, or so we think. Or so we think. We still haven't played Life is Strange 2. So keep that in mind. But context matters. In all games, in all shows, in all movies, context matters. Um, and I get this argument all the time. It's like, well, Adam, why, why are you so nitpicky on the lore? Why are you so nitpicky on the canon? Um, and the one thing people argue with me about is when Disney bought... Star Wars, and I said, they're going to mess it up. They're going to mess it up. I hate Disney. I hate Disney. I'll put that on the record. And when they said, oh, yeah, all of the EU, all those books you grew up with, all the lore, it's not canon anymore. And I was just like, so the Bane trilogy is no longer canon. Nope. So the Thrawn trilogy is no longer canon. Nope. And that bothered me so much because this is what built the context of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So... Before we get any further, I think we should define a definition between canon and lore. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, canon, right, is the events that took place in a game, movie, show, whatever you have. They're the events that are factual, that, that actually happen in the game. Mm-hmm. So going off of Life is Strange, uh, it is canon that Chloe's mom marries david yeah so that's canon that that can't change that's part of the canon but the lore of that is the context of that 
So if you play the first Life is Strange game and you explore the garage, if you explore David's, uh, you'll soon find out that I believe, I wish I went through, the, we just played Life is Strange too, and I wish I went through the garage. You but, didn't play Life is Strange 2, you played Life is Strange. Did I say 2? Yes. Oh, well, no, I said I played Life is Strange 2, like, as well. Oh, uh, well. Well, yeah. <laughs> English language, people. It's it's a It's a bummer. Um, but if you go in the garage and you look at the lore, the context of that, you'll soon find out that David met, um, oh, I'm stomping on names tonight, uh, Chloe's mom. Uh, um. Now I don't know. Blonde diner <laughs> waitress. Ugh. Um, but anyways, but David met her in the diner that she works at. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and that's the lore, that's the context. And that's why context matters, because you're interested of, like, well, why did this happen? So the lore is mostly about the questions that you ask. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. And context matters, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the two things I'll, I'll give this. So one thing, lore matters because context matters, right? But I want, I want to give our, our audience two, two things that they can remember. If you, if you go away from this episode... Um, remembering one thing, remember what I'm about to say, right? As if I'm some prophet of video games. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Um, but just like we have two eyes to perceive media, there are two eyes of the importance, uh, there's your first eye, uh, the importance of lore and canon. So the two, the two eyes that perceive lore and canon are immersion and interest levels. Immersion and interest levels. For, so for one thing, and Liz, this is something you can relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, when we talk about the show Friends, right? The lore in the context of Friends, and yes, there is lore to Friends, I guess. Um, but there's canon events. There's more canon mm-hmm. than lore, right? Yeah. Events that took place. Yeah. When we talk about canon with immersion and interest levels, <clears throat> when you get into the later seasons of Friends and the canon events start not matching up yeah to the first season you're first of all your immersion talking about how you're immersed into this world invested in this world yeah start to decrease as well as your interest levels because if we look at our interest levels in season eight through ten the interest levels kind of decrease because the canon events um start not adding up yeah like what what are some things about like the show friends that like doesn't add up well, for one, I mean, I like the later seasons. I'm that kind of person. I always like later seasons in shows because I'm been. early. That's most shows. Like, even Gilmore Girls, I like the later seasons more. Don't tell anyone that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I like later seasons, but it does ruin, like, when I notice that things change. Like, so when Monica and Chandler start dating, they watch these videos where you see that Chandler met Monica when she was younger, and they met Rachel when they were younger, but then we are actually just watching the second season recently, mm-hmm. and they're watching the video of Monica and Rachel going off to prom, and Ross is going to was going to go to prom with Rachel, but that's not my point. Um, but they were they were mocking Monica's weight and Rachel's nose, and it was Chandler making the jokes. Yeah, which I mean is fine, but he was saying them as if he hadn't already seen them when, according to the later seasons. Mm-hmm. He had already seen them. He he met Monica when she was, was fat, she fat because that's why she lost all the weight mm-hmm. to make fun, to, you know, to to tease him. And everyone knew that Rachel got her nose done, but like he had seen those, so like he, I, it just it throws me off with that. And then there was another one. There's a there's a lot there's a lot there was a lot. If you really watched the show, like we've watched it so many times through. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you really pay close attention, you'll notice that the later seasons start to contradict the story they made you believe in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, like when... No, it doesn't really have anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> or, and I was complaining about this. This was in an early season. I think this is season two, where it's later revealed that um, Chandler has a third nipple, right? Oh, yeah. Chandler has a third nipple. And Ross was his roommate in college for four years. You're telling me in four years in a roommate, according to canon, 
that he never noticed that Chandler has a third nipple. He didn't just grow that when he yeah. became 25. And yet, Joey knows about it. But Joey knows about it. Because he said it was nubbin. But, my, I mean, my way of thinking is that possibly Chandler, as a teenager, was a little more self-conscious about it and kept it yeah. hidden. Like, he could have walked around, like, he's a weirdo. He could have walked around with a towel around his chest all the time, and no one would have thought anything with of it. With a chest? Uh, no. no, around his chest. No, no. guys don't do that. That's what I'm saying. He's a weirdo. He could have just done that. Oh. And no one would think second about it because he's a weirdo. If I had a third nipple, I would rather just show my third nipple than for me being a guy and wrap it around my nipples. Maybe he wears a shirt all the time. Like, he oh, he never left the shower. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying there are ways that you could hide it. Yeah, from his third nipple. Yes. So, and I mean, you know that one is a little different. But we're not talking about friends. We're talking about video games. And we're not talking about nipples anymore. <laughs> Um, but this is this is exactly what I mean about video games and why lore and, and canon matters. Because if we talk about – and if we're still going on the whole continuum of um, Life is Strange, right, then if we talked about Before the Storm, right, and the biggest problem uh, people had when they first announced Before the Storm was it being developed by Deck Nine, mm-hmm. not by Don't Nod. So everybody had their worries about like, well – if it's developed by a different development team, or if it's made by a different development mm-hmm. team, they're not going to have the same lore and context and canon that matters to us all. And yes, there are some, there are some things that contradict each other a little bit. Um, one one uh, minor thing, and I'm still a little iffy about this. When Chloe gets the blue stripe in her hair in Before mm-hmm. the Storm, people say that. Well, she had that uh, blue streak in her hair on her 16th birthday. If we look at Life is Strange Season 1 mm-hmm. and the photograph um, um, montage, I guess yeah. you could call it. Um, but in, in Before the Storm, she doesn't get until later into her 16th year. Like, she's 16 in Before the Storm. Yeah. But then she puts it later on. So there are some, and I call, and I call that minor. I won't be nitpicky yeah, about that. Yeah, that's really minor. Mm-hmm. Like, they did it for nostalgia. Like, oh, look, Chloe's getting her blue hair. Yeah. Like, it's introducing you to the Chloe that you know in Life is Strange. And what would have bothered me more is if she went straight to the blue hair and not the blue streak. Yeah. That would have bothered me. But the fact of the timing of the blue streak, also. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. Also, um, Rachel claims to be a Leo. But she also says that her birthday is July 22nd. But Someone didn't do their math. Yeah. I did I did my little Google research. And Leos are born on July 23rd. July 22nd is something else. I really don't follow horoscopes. But I was just curious. Like, well, did they get that right? And they were just one day off from Leo. Meow. <laughs> um, but that's exactly why lore and canon matters. Because... Yeah. It immerses you into the world, uh, and, and let's talk about that for a little bit. It immerses you into the world, by which I mean that you're invested in the universe of this story. You are part of this town. You are part of this city, this country, this universe for uh, for which this game is placed on. So you're looking at the events that took place. Well, how did, first of all, how did Max get her powers? Nobody knows. I, I will do a little side note here. If you play Captain Spirit, the development team, the director's Life is Strange, kind of um, teased the uh, players for this. Because Captain Spirit is like in this mirror interview. And he says, oh, are you going to tell us a little bit about how you found out about your powers? And he said, no. Just like how the directors were like, oh, are you going to tell us about how Max got her powers? No. No. (laughs) Uh, So that's a little side note. Um, But if anybody were to say that... Oh, in the canon of Life is Strange, Max got her powers this way. Nope. There is no canon. There is no lore. We they know don't even let on a little bit. They don't even let on a little bit. They just know that Max had some traumatic events, and that's how she got her powers. Just like in um, Spoiler Alert, Captain Spirit got his powers after a traumatic event. Yeah. So that's part of the, the lore, the canon, the universe of this. We know that people get these sort of powers out of traumatic events, yeah. right? So if we were to say that uh, Captain Spirit got his powers 
from kissing a secret butterfly that flew in his window. Yeah. That's not really part of the universe. That's not really how things happen in this context, in this in this lore. And that would just aggravate people. Yeah. In the same way people were worried about before the storm. Yeah. You know, saying that, like, well, it's developed by Deck Nine. They're gonna, not going to have the same context. But that's the kind of job that Deck Nine needed. You know, yeah. to immerse the people, first of all, to immer- immerse the people playing this game, you're still in the Life Strains universe. You're still a part of this world. Yeah. Uh, Please stay in this. You're still in Arcadia Bla- 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 Bla. <laughs> You're still in Arcadia Bay. You're still in Oregon. Uh, you're still fine. But the other part is interest level. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you start to see that the canon and the lore isn't lining up, yeah, then you're gonna lose interest in that game. Yeah, you know, because nothing's actually lining up, nothing's actually like correlating with each other. It's more contradicting each other. Mm-hmm. It's not even about lining up, like like you were saying with friends. You know, yeah, a lot of the times it contradicts itself, and instead of immersing yourself. Right? Yeah. You're and I'm focusing on like, didn't they say that in the second season? Like Yeah. You know, I'm thinking more about what happened in the in the earlier seasons than focusing on what's happening in the episode that I'm watching. Exactly. And that's what I mean. It's just like when when people talk to me like, Why am I so nitpicky with what happened in the game? Um, I'm not even gonna get into Fallout or Skyrim. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> But that's a heavily, that's a game heavily based in lore, right? Um, now I'm just going to end this episode here, right? So we talked about how there's two eyes when it comes to lore and context, or lore and canon, right? We talked about immersion levels and interest levels in the game. The two eyes that perceive canon are immersion and interest levels, right? That's why this game, Captain Spirit, is so important because this is pretty much lore right the whole game is based on lore yeah and just like what you said liz that you kind of rushed through the game you didn't really take everything in internally you didn't really piece everything together um you kind of you kind of left yourself saying you, you well i'll let you say it. like you kind of left yourself saying like what what was that like nothing was it really explained yeah. you know yeah like did you feel that way yeah, like, I mean, it's, like I said, it's explained, I understand where they are and everything, but I didn't feel like it, like, I don't know, I didn't feel mm-hmm. anything as significant as I felt in Life is Strange. Yeah, whereas I, like, saw it as a lore enthusiast, right? And I read every single piece of document, um, <laughs> every piece of document, um, I, I read every piece of paper, I pieced things together, I, I saw everything that happened in that in just a two-hour game. Um, and, uh, and I left it with it, like, with, like, a heavy story, right? Um, uh, and, and I left with it satisfied and thinking that, like, okay, I'm fully prepared, um, I'm fully prepared for Life is Strange Season 2, um, thinking that, uh, the lore and the context are thinking that it matters, and this is going to be leading up to... Uh, Life is Strange Season 2. You know? Yeah. And that's why this matters, because this is a game about lore. You can't go into Captain Spirit thinking that it's just a game, it's just a free game. Yeah. You have to think about, it, about like, your mission right now is to look at every piece of lore, meaning context. You need mm-hmm. to look at every piece of context to see what Chris's life was like. Yeah. You know? Why... Why did his mom go? Why is his dad so angry? Uh, why are the police not involved? Um, here's your mission, listeners. If you haven't played it yet, why is the main villain called Mantroid? Yes. And that's all based on lore. If you don't know why Chris based the main villain on Mantroid, that's why you need to go out and listen, uh, read all the lore, read all the context, look at every piece of document, open every locker... Um, I will say this one thing. I'm still figuring this out. I texted, um, uh, Michelle Cole, right? Mm-hmm. How do you get the cell phone lock? I'm going to find it. I'm going to spend mm-hmm. one of my days off just looking. I'm going to find it. I looked at everything. Um, and I, and I even tweeted to him 
uh, to, to Michelle. Um, I tweeted, like, look, I even put into his cell phone uh, the death day of his wife. And I'm like, that's pretty morbid if that's yeah. what it is. Um, and I tweeted it out, and another Twitter user said, oh, this is the phone. I was like, that's not it. That's not it. I thought he was trolling me. And so I put it in, and it worked. I was like, how did you get that? And I'm looking it everywhere. It could still be a date. Oh. No, there's what? no four. It's just not oh four. It's just four. I know. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. It but could still potentially be a date. I'm not going to say it on the yeah. podcast, but now you know that it starts with a four. Um, and it's eight digits. Yeah. I was looking for four digits because who has an eight digit cell phone? Someone who really wants to keep someone out of there. I guess that's a French cell phone. I don't know. No, I've seen people who have, like, ridiculously long passwords. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. The lore of this game matters. You're going to get context of mm-hmm. Life is Strange 2. And because of Captain Spirit, you're going to be immersed even more into Life is Strange 2. And your interest levels are going to be raised higher mm-hmm. because you know the context of Life is Strange 2. Uh, and it's pretty much confirmed, I believe, that um, Chris is going to be the main protagonist. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is the other thing that I think you missed out on. That when you go through your dad's emails and you go in and it has a warning of um, uh, train hoppers. I didn't miss that. You didn't? And you, did you hear what uh, Chris says to it? No. He says, it would be fun to be that. Choo-choo. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And he says it would be fun. Yeah. So I'm thinking that he's going to take his backpack, he's going to go, and he's going to be one of those train hoppers. Choo-choo. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. Uh, it's going to immerse you more into Life is Strange 2. Yeah. And it's going to raise your interest levels. Yeah. And that's why I believe that, and that's why Lizzie believes. I don't want to just be the Adam show, even though it's what I believe. <laughs> uh, but you're not really a lore enthusiast really you just like to play games i care if things make sense that's really all i care about i'm i'm nitpicky in ways where it's like i want it to make sense yeah in the way of lore yeah um but i think you more care about canon the events that took place and how they match up yeah than why those events took place yeah i don't really care about the why yeah i just care that they happened but it's awesome that the directors of life is strange uh the creators of captain spirit uh, made this game all about, you know, the questions that we ask. Who, what, where, when, why. You know, and it, all those questions are answered if you just look really deeply into Captain Spirit. Yeah. And that's what's going to raise your immersion levels of Life is Strange 2. So if you haven't played it already, go out, download Captain Spirit. Um, I didn't talk too much about lore and canon too much. Maybe we'll have a future episode where I'll talk about the Elder Scrolls and Fallout lore and why that I'll matters. I'll be excused from that. <laughs> That'll be when um, when we have a baby. And, and I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of here. sorry. I have to go take care of the baby. Bye. Part one of a five-hour series. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Why no. Elder Scrolls matters. Right. We're going to go now. All right. So I think that will do it for this episode. I just wanted to give a, a, uh, a short uh explanation of why this matters yeah we want to give you our first impressions of captain spirit Mm -hmm. uh did did you overall enjoy the game yeah it was a cute game it was a cute game yeah how dare you heathen um but you enjoyed your time in the game and you're gonna play it again yeah i'm gonna play it again when i can take my time yeah um and we want to just give our thoughts on uh game stops buyouts uh life is strange 2 finally being announced uh, as well as we're going to talk about this next week, uh, game addictions. Yeah. And what they actually are. That'll be fun. It was just my entire life of people like, oh, you're addicted to games. Okay, dear, save it for next week. No, I'm eight years old and I have a Game Boy. No. <laughs> um, all right, so if you haven't already, uh, please follow us on Twitter, at Gaming Groceries. Uh, I tweet out all the time just to say, like, hey, what, what we're going to be talking about next um if you ha- and we just uh opened up an instagram account so search games and groceries on instagram we're posting memes and behind the scenes photos on instagram um 
And that's pretty much our social media. Uh, I just wanted to go on Instagram and Twitter. There's no Facebook. I don't think that's really necessary. Um, and if, you, if you're looking still for a place to listen to us, how are you listening to us now? Um, but we're the big names are on Anchor, YouTube, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. If you go on our Anchor page, you can see all the other podcast stations that we're, that we're listed on. Uh, go give us a listen. Uh, give us a try. And, uh, and we, subscribe. And subscribe to YouTube. Well, no, you can subscribe on Anchor. Like, you follow oh, it yeah. on Anchor. Well, follow us on Anchor, please. Do it. And maybe you'll see pictures of Floki, our dog. Um, last thing I'll say, though, is um, thank you all who listen to us while yes. we're still working on our uh, audio interfaces. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, each and every episode, we're hoping to get better and better, uh, including uh, sound quality and everything else. So if you've been listening to us since episode one, we thank you for keep listening to us. And uh, we're trying to get better and better each and every episode. So we yep. appreciate you very highly. Yes. So I will end it there. Uh, please join us next week as we're going to be talking about game addictions and why that's bullcrap. Yep. So we'll see you next week and keep on gaming. <laughs>